This is Jim Ducey from KMVT Community Television. We're here at the 50th annual Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. Carol and I are going to be wandering around those streets today talking with the artists and artisans and vendors and some of the people from all over the Bay Area. It's going to be a fun day and there's a lot of people here already. Uh, stay with us audience, I think you're going to enjoy yourselves. Hello, I am Corwin Rogers. It is a beautiful day here in Mountain View, California. We are at the 50th annual Art Wine Festival. Joining me today is my co-host, the lovely Jamie. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Melendez and I'm so excited to be here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. And like you said, 50 years, that is so exciting. So happy to be here on what? You said the diamond anniversary earlier? I believe so, yes, the diamond anniversary. We've got so many vendors, we've got so many artists, We've got so many cool things here. I encourage everyone to come down and check it out. We're going to do that later. Yeah. So excited to see everything. I actually did see a popcorn station earlier, and um, I'm a big fan of popcorn, so oh. excited to check that out. Yeah. Uh, what else are you excited to see? Oh, I'm excited to see all the intricate work that the artists can do with their hands. There's this one guy who does metal sculptures every year, oh, wow. and they are just stunning. Wow. Yeah, they're okay. really cool. I'm gonna have to check that out. I did see a, a guy earlier as well who does paintings and he does skeletons. Everything's skull skeletons and so perfect timing for a Halloween coming up very soon. Oh yeah, spooky, scary <laughs> skeletons. Those are great. Yes. Do you have any plans for Halloween? What are you gonna be? I'm not sure. Um, I like to be multiple things for Halloween. Uh, some of the things I'm gonna be, uh, two of my friends and I are gonna be Powerpuff Girls. I'll be Blossom, if you're familiar with that cartoon. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes, yeah, so excited. How about you? Myself? Yeah, probably a skeleton. <laughs> Keep it simple. Or I a zombie, it. you know, makeup's always fun. <laughs> yes. But yes, anyway, we are here, the Art Wine Festival, and it is so cool, so cool. So exciting. Yes. Um, who are we interviewing today? I mean, who are, or should I say, who are you most looking forward to interviewing today? Um, most looking forward to? Probably got to be the mayor. He's our special guest. He's our star. He's responsible for at least part of this. And it is great. He's done a good job this year. I'm excited to meet him as well. Um, I'm excited to meet the director of Western Ballet. Sounds like uh, they do a lot for the community, including, I think I read, making uh, ballet performances affordable to the Mountain View community. So very excited to learn more about that. Oh yeah, that is exciting. Ballet yeah. is phenomenal, especially Western Ballet. Yeah. Have you seen any of their shows? I have not, but since I've done some research on them, I really am looking forward to their next performance. Yeah, that'll yeah. be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. With all that in mind, let's go to our first street interview with Jim. To you, Jim. Hi, this is Jim Ducey at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. We're talking with Hector now from Sun Lover's Place. This is my and company. We and we'd like to talk to you about the artwork you do. This is really special stuff. Thank you so much. This is a family business, as I tell you. We are the third generation. We, I learned from my parents, my parents from my grandparents. Uh, I tell you, we use the same, it's the same technique. Even we use the same tools. We just add new designs, but everything is the same. We use three metals, it's a steel, copper, and bronze. And you see, nothing is painted. All the color we made it with three different kinds of heatings. So that makes it piece unique, one of the kind. And at the end, we put the sealer. So these pieces are good for outside too. Color bonfe and they don't rust. It's a natural metal color. Wow, that is wonderful. Where is your studio? Okay, we came from LA. Actually, my studio is from Corona. We came from Corona, California, South LA, close to Disneyland, the happy place of the world. So, <laughs> yeah, and we go to different festivals every weekend mostly to the main main festivals 
like this. This is one of the best. Mountain View is a beautiful place to be. That's great. How long have you been coming to Mountain View? Uh, we, we've been here like uh, 12 years, probably. Probably more than 10 years, that's for sure. Uh, usually in the same spot. This is uh, one of the best I see. One of the other uh, visitors was saying that they bought several pieces from you over the years. That's a good point. We have a lot of repeat customers. When you get one of, one of my pieces, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see you again because you will get a lot of compliments, good compliments, and, and I'm going to start to see you. You're going to be one of my best customers, so <laughs> that's for sure. Well, your, uh, your booth really caught my eye, so uh, I'm going to take a look around at it, too. Thank you so much. Take your time. Any questions, just let me know. All right. Great. Thanks very much. Hi. We're here with Brian today from Harmony Tie-Dye. Brian, how's it going? It's doing great here. We're out here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival, and uh, we've been out early. We got a set up, and we're doing really good. We're so glad to be back in town. How many years have you been at this festival? Because I've heard a lot about you. Well, this is a family business since 1979. Uh, the first time we came out here was the early 80s, so it's a little over 35 years that we've been coming out to this show. Tell us a little bit how you would create something like this. Well, this is all tie-dye. It's all very intricate, detailed folding. Of course, the uh, where you put the dye and all that really makes a big difference as to what design you get. You get all kinds of really neat designs. Uh, a lot of the new stuff we're doing is paw prints and peace signs, happy faces, of course, and uh, lots of fun different things. Something for everybody. We've got kids' clothes, adults, babies, really something for everybody. Now, where are you located and where do you do this kind of work? So we hand make every one of these in Modesto, California, and uh, we've got a little shop out there. You can come downtown. Uh, we're at 512 14th Street in Modesto, or you can look us up at HarmonyTieDyes.com. That's our, uh, and you can find us on the web. So, find, yeah. Th that sounds great, and you have the honor of listening to this great band behind us. And you'll be here today and tomorrow, that's correct, that Saturday right. and Sunday. Yep. How, and did I ask you how long you've been coming here? A little over 35 years, yes. So I'm second generation. My parents started this in 1979. We came out in the early 80s. We've been doing Bay Area shows just about uh, since the beginning. It's been really great. And lots of return customers, people, our fan club is out here. Everybody having a really good time. Well, thank you, Brian, for being with us today. It was really fun interviewing you. Absolutely. And now, back to you. Hello and welcome back. We're so excited that you guys are joining us uh, here again at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. And we have an exciting interview with the mayor, Lucas Ramirez. Mayor Lucas, it must be so good to be back here at the 50th Art Wine Festival under your watch. What are you excited to see here today? Honestly, just the attendance. This has been remarkable. Uh, and I think one metric for success is how difficult it is to find parking. It took me quite a while, but that's a good thing. That means people are coming out, patronizing the businesses, you know, purchasing things. I'm excited just to have it back in Mountain View. That's good, that's good. Uh, as mayor, well, I've always been curious, what exactly does a mayor do? In Mountain View, uh, the mayor is a member of the city council. We don't have a directly elected mayor. Uh, every year, uh, we change leadership. Uh, this was my year by our convention. The vice mayor becomes the mayor. And then uh, whoever is the most senior member of the council who has not been in leadership becomes vice mayor. Uh, so I'm, uh, my responsibility pre predominantly is running the meetings. I'm sort of the ceremonial figurehead. Uh, I take on media requests uh, for interviews. Uh, a lot of people want to meet with the mayor. Uh, but the honest answer is there's a big gulf between perceived power and actual power. Um, I, I'm not the you know, chief executive officer of the city. That's the city manager. Um, but I'm happy to you know, contribute in this capacity because it, it is a great honor to be mayor of your hometown. So what are you, and by extension, what is the city council working on then? Great question. Uh, the most challenging task that we have is to complete what's called our housing element. It's a state mandated process that every jurisdiction up and down the state of California must go through. Uh, we're planning for a lot of housing growth. Uh, this is the six, sixth cycle. They're eight year cycles. So every eight years, 
every jurisdiction, uh, city and county, uh, must uh, prepare a plan for uh, meeting a state-mandated amount of housing growth. It was never challenging in the past. Uh, the fifth cycle uh, pr prescribed for us uh, just under 3,000 housing, net new housing units over eight years. Now it's 11,135 net new housing units. So uh, roughly 380% uh, increase over the last cycle. Uh, not an easy thing to do. And then more challenging because there's a lot of community concern about infrastructure, services, and amenities necessary to accommodate that growth. So what the city council is working on is a strategy to meet the state requirements plan for 11,135 net new housing units over eight years. Um, and fortunately, we have a good strategy in using the existing general plan, which has designated change areas. Uh, so would love to speak about that at length whenever we have more time, but that's probably our, our top priority over the next several months. Infrastructure is very important for the new housing. What is the council doing to make sure the infrastructure is in place for the new housing? So fortunately, our general plan uh, includes analysis of the infrastructure needs as we grow as a city. And some of the strategies include uh, community benefits. Whenever uh, an area redevelops, we can ask for just a little bit more from that developer. Uh, there is uh, a complicated formula, but basically if uh, a developer is able to take advantage of additional density or height, the value of that land increases. And so we yeah. could say, we're gonna take some of that value and we're going to reinvest it in infrastructure or meeting community needs. We also have something called uh, impact fees. We are able to measure uh, a development's uh, fair share impact on the need for utilities, the need for you know, transportation infrastructure, and the developer, when they're going through the development review process, will know how much they have to pay to help improve the infrastructure to help accommodate the growth that we're experiencing. All right, that makes sense. Now, I understand you're running for re-election to the city council. Uh, one, do you think you'll win? And two, what's your first thing you're gonna do if you do win? I am cautiously optimistic. Um, I, we have uh, five candidates seeking three seats. Uh, and, you know, I think the three incumbents have done, uh, hopefully, I would say, a, a pretty good job um, over the last four years of responding to uh, the pandemic, uh, meeting some uh, uh, community concerns that I, I think none of us were anticipating, um, responding to uh, emergencies and crises, um, and always working in collaboration with our community and with the city staff. Uh, so I'm very proud of the work that we've done over the past four years. Uh, the two incumbents, um, are, sorry, the two challengers, um, I think, you know, have to uh, do the, so the legwork that the incumbents have done, getting out into the community, knocking on doors, sharing their, their message. So, and I think they're doing that. So I can't be complacent as long as I go out and talk to people, stay in touch with the community. Um, I, I think I have a, a, a pretty good shot. Um, and then should I have the good fortune to be reelected, uh, housing has been my top priority, uh, addressing uh, the crisis in, with, with homelessness. So finding ways to uh, increase the supply of permanent supportive housing to get folks off the streets and into housing where they have access to the, the services that they need to survive and, and thrive. Um, and then uh, building housing uh, for not only low income people, but also moderate income people, young professionals, people starting families. Um, there isn't an easy way to stay in Mountain View, you know, for those of us who have been uh, fortunate enough to live here our entire lives, uh, the cost of housing is getting to a point where it's very difficult to own, right? I'm a renter. Um, and as much as I would love to own, it's hard to see a, a, a path to victory there. So uh, my particular focus has been meeting the housing needs of our community, addressing homelessness. I think we've done a lot of great work over the past four years, but there's still a lot more work to do. That's quite the noble cause. Where can people find out more about the mayor and the city council itself? Uh, the city website uh, is the best resource. It isn't always the easiest uh, website to navigate, but that's because there's a lot of material on there. Uh, so to learn more about how uh, governance in the city is conducted, to learn more about uh, the council's uh, strategic plan, the strategic roadmap, which includes a lot of our uh, work plan priorities, uh, the city website is the best place to go. It's also a good place for the community to share 
concerns or um, ideas with the city council. There's uh, a portal called Ask Mountain View, um, and we receive requests for, uh, you know, infrastructure repairs. There's a pothole in my street. The street light is out. Um, whatever it is that um, it, a neighborhood would like the city council to know, use Ask Mountain View to report those concerns. Or if there's something going on um, that you would like to share your input on, the city website is a, another place to, it's the first place I would recommend going to. And what about you specifically? Where can people find more about you and maybe even support your re-election? Uh, well, I have to be very careful. I don't know if I'm allowed to share my website here. Right, <laughs> but I do right. have a, 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 a campaign website. Uh, RamiresforCouncil.com, um, and uh, it, it includes some of the things I'm proud of uh, in, over the last four years that I've had the pleasure to serve on the city council, and some of the things I'm looking forward to doing should I have the good fortune to be reelected. Oh, well, thank you very much, Lucas. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much again, and that was Mayor Lucas Ramirez. Um, and here's another street interview. Hi again, we're here with John Derrick of Through the Garden Window. And I have to say, when I passed by, the aromas were really quite amazing. Tell us a little bit about uh, the business. Everything's handmade from scratch, from fruit, seeds, herbs, and spices. No wood chips, bark, grass, or fillers. That's my sales pitch. You hang one of these in a room, it'll throw that pleasant fragrance a few hundred square feet for a few months. I have the refresher oils to revive the fragrance at your discretion. You can make it as mild or as strong as you want. If you do it my way, it lasts a long time. Well, I hear that you've been uh, doing this for quite some time. You're in Las Vegas, but you must make the tour of all of the art and wine festivals. Uh, we were in Reno last weekend and, and Salt Lake City doing two shows, and I'm doing a show in Vegas this weekend also. So we, just the two of us, and we only do two shows now at a time on a weekend. Yeah, that's great. So how did the business start? We were in the antique business selling uh, linens, and they had a particular smell, and my wife put potpourri in a bowl. Lady said, I'll buy the bowl if you leave the potpourri in it. So we started making potpourri and selling it. And that was 33 years ago. That was, that was actually in 90. 92. I think it was October of 91, and we actually got started by February of 92. That's great. How long have you been coming to the Mountain View Festival? I've done it three or four times, but we've been gone since the COVID and that, you know. So uh, I think we've done it five years, five times. That's great. You enjoy visiting all the art and wine festivals? Yeah, we do a lot of them up and down the West Coast here. We do... Uh, we don't do anything in downtown San Francisco. We pretty much stay to Sacramento and south and, and east of the coast, but we do a lot of stuff in California, all the way from San Diego north. Well, it's really beautiful stuff, and uh, really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Hi, it's Carol again, and I'm here with Jim, and we're having a wonderful time at the festival. But more importantly, we're here with Colleen, and Colleen is, um, has these beautiful succulents, and I'm going to introduce that and let her speak a little bit more. Tell us about the succulent, succulents, Colleen. Hi, um, our business is Succulent Vertical Gardens, and we custom plant for people here at the show. So you can come to our booth, pick the succulents you want, pick the frame that you want, and then we will put together the arrangement for you, and then you take it home. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit more about this particular one, yeah. just as an example, how you do that. Sure. This is our wine glass. We also have a wine bottle, and um, it fits about four succulents, and um, it's a fun hostess gift to give or just a cute little thing to put on a, a patio table um, or an arrangement. Okay. Now, let's say somebody wanted to get a hold of you. And, and order one of these. Do you have a website that maybe you could share with us? We do. Um, our website, it's succulentverticalgardens.com and we actually ship nationwide. So it, they're great Christmas gifts, wedding gifts, birthdays, things like that. So we can ship all over the United States. Now, how long would one of these last? As long as you take care of it, they will last for years. They need sunlight, about four to six hours of sunlight a day. And then um, you water them thoroughly about every two weeks. Okay, so do you spritz them with a spray or do you actually 
put water on them? You actually lay them flat like this, water thoroughly, and then hang them back up. And the frames are made from repurposed redwood, and they have drainage built into the back, so any excess will drain through. So they'll hold up over a long period of time. Oh, that's really good. Now let me ask you this about the festival. How long have you been coming to the Mountain View Arts and Wine Festival? This, I believe, is our sixth year doing this event. So we really enjoy it. And we're from Clovis, and it's hot there. So this weather is amazing. We're really enjoying being here. Now, how hot was it in Clovis today when you left? Well, it was, I think, 112 when we left to come here. So it, it was very hot. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, Colleen, we really want to wish you a lot of luck here today. Stay cool. You're a lovely person, and we love your product. Thank you so much. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you now. And we're back with the executive director of KMVT, Bobby Chastain. This is going to be a fun interview. Uh, Bobby Chastain, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, just a few questions. As the executive director of KMVT, what do you want viewers at home to know about the community of Mountain View? About Mountain View? Well, I want them to know about the diversity. Uh, there, there's so many walks of life here. You travel outside of the Bay Area, you travel outside of Silicon Valley, and you see that right away. I mean, we're really fortunate to have so many diverse interests and walks of life here, and I hope that it comes through in our programming. I definitely agree. And even just here being at the festival, you can really see that diversity that you're talking about. I love the uh, Art and Wine Festival. We, we were here every year uh, as long as I can remember. Obviously, there's been a hiatus because of uh, COVID. Uh, last year, it came back, but it wasn't on Castro Street. It feels really great to be back on Castro Street. It feels sort of normal again. Uh, and everyone's having the same great time that they always used to. Definitely. Uh, I completely agree with the normalcy. Just that feeling, it just, it just feels great. It just feels like life is kind of somewhat getting back to normal, like you said. Um, so I read that KNVT mission is to provide media literacy, education, and hands-on training and civic engagement. Can you tell viewers at home why this mission is so important to you and your company? Sure, and it's pretty wide-ranging, right? I mean, the first part of it is we want people to learn how to create their own media, uh, you know, do it responsibly. We have a studio, we have equipment that you can check out, and people our users can use this equipment and make programming about whatever they want to make programming about. We have a wide range of workshops that are, we're kind of coming back uh, with, you know, after COVID and we relocated. Um, but we want people to learn to make media responsibly and have the know-how. So we have all the, the equipment you could, could want, very professional, and anyone that lives in our communities can come learn about how to do it and then use it to make programming they want to. As far as civic engagement, which was the other piece of that, uh, we highlight events and programs that aren't otherwise shown. We do a lot of coverage of local high school sports. Uh, in every other year, we do a lot of coverage for local elections, um, candidates uh, from the cities that we serve, Mountain View. We also serve Los Altos, Cupertino, and Sunnyvale. So we'll partner this year with the League of Women Voters to do um, programming about candidates and school board candidates. And that's not something that... A, voter can otherwise see. It's not going to be covered by network. It's not going to be covered by other local cable outlets. So that, that's a big part of our civic engagement as well. Definitely. It's really important that viewers at home can see all that. Um, and then finally, what do you love most about KMVT and the community of Mountain View? KMVT, I love working in a creative environment. I don't get to do as much production work as I used to. I come from a you know production background. Um, but just to be around creative people, people telling their stories, it's always been exciting to me. Um, as far as Mountain View, it's just, Mountain View fits so well with KMVT because there are so many creative people in Mountain View, so they, that one feeds the other, I would like to think. And then just really quickly, going back to what you were saying earlier about people being able to check out this equipment and these workshops, how can we go about going uh, about signing up for that. Right, so just, you know, Google kmvt15.org or uh, go on our YouTube and check check out some of our programming. We have a pretty robust YouTube channel. All the stuff goes up there for video on demand. You can see how diverse our programming is. Everything from public access shows about conspiracy theories and um, UFOs, uh, both 
uh, all, all the way to you know things about art and culture, and then like I said, the high school sports and municipal events. So just KMVT, as in Mountain View Television. Uh, look us up, and you can find out how to how to take classes and get involved. Sounds really good. I'm I'm really excited to check out the conspiracy theory stuff. I love a good conspiracy theory. Don't so, believe uh, don't believe everything you hear. Exactly. Uh, so Bobby Chastain, thank you so much for joining us, and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Now is the moment. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earned. For help, visit DAV.org. Hi, my name is Janet Wu and I produce a show here at KMVT called Silicon Valley Buzz. So I got my start here um, taking the studio workshop class and I think KMVT is a great place for adults um, like me to come and to learn about something new and to maybe uh, develop a new hobby and discover something that you really like to do and something that you're passionate about that you would have never otherwise come across in your daily life. Introducing a new day of the week, someday. Now, everything you were going to do someday is on the calendar. Want to retire someday? You'll really want this. A My Social Security account at socialsecurity.gov. You can estimate your future benefits and manage current benefits online. Millions of people have a My Social Security account. Get yours today, because someday is here at socialsecurity.gov. You'd do anything to take care of that spot on your lawn, so why not take care of that spot on your skin? If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. Check your skin for suspicious or changing spots. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out what to look for. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Chris Domine is a husband, father, and athlete because a kidney transplant gave him a second chance at life, made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as a donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Every day there are many children with physical imperfections and deformities who courageously face the world. But through the Caring for Kids program from the Plastic Surgery Foundation and the Hannah Storm Foundation, you can help give them a new outlook on life. Hi, my name is Jason, and you're watching KMVT. My name is Blake. I received a heart transplant when I was two weeks old. I play defense for the Red Hot Tornadoes. Sometimes my heart starts pounding like faster and faster as I go. I know I have someone else's heart inside me. It makes me feel happy because someone was generous enough to give me a second chance to live. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility 
Independence changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. My legs, sometimes I'll go numb. I had double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Well, the beginning is the hardest time. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. I was a dancer. I don't see walking the way I walk any different than doing a dance. It just looks different. It's a different dance. You see me have an off day, it doesn't take away from who I am. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. But I would exercise every day. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. To make a lot of changes in my life and just adapt to it. I'm going to acknowledge its presence. I'm not going to discount it. But at the same time, I'm going to try my best to not let it stop me. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. When you're dying, what will it be like? You think you may know, until you see what hospice can do. Expert loving care that enables more cherished moments, more smiles, maybe one more dance. Turns out when you're dying, there's more living to do. These families discovered what hospice is. See what's possible at momentsoflife.org. Hi, my name is Sabrina, and you're watching KMVT 15. Hello, and welcome back from our break. I'm so excited once again here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. And I'm really excited to do some interviews today with Alexi and Eileen Zuberia, um, directors of the Western Ballet. Thank you so much for joining us. And then for our viewers at home and maybe who don't know too much about the Western Ballet, would you mind explaining what Western Ballet is all about? All right, I'll be glad to do so. <laughs> My name is Alexi, again, uh, Artistic Director of Western Ballet for the past 15 years. Uh, thank you for having us here. Um, Western Ballet is a non-profit organization that was founded in 1976. We have been around for 47 years and is serving the uh, community of Mountain View and surrounding areas. Uh, <laughs> what we do is that we teach ballet, we uh, also put productions and we are a non-profit, therefore we make it affordable for everyone. And it's very easy, you just have to show up and express your interest pretty much will make sure you study ballet. That is honestly really incredible. Uh, growing up, I couldn't afford dance lessons, but I wish I could have. So it's amazing that Western Ballet does provide that for a lot of people. Um, I wanted to ask, so since Western Ballet's mission is to make the art of classical ballet, performances, and education accessible to all, what would you like the community of Mountain View to know about the importance of all that? Well, it doesn't matter your socioeconomic circumstances, but if you wanted to learn ballet or have your child learn ballet, you could just come to us and express your interest, and then we will work with you and your situation, because we don't want anyone to be left out who might be interested in learning this wonderful art form. And it's not just for the elites, it's for anybody in the community, and that's our mission, is to welcome the entire community. I mean, I think that's a wonderful mission and honestly, thank you guys for doing that. I think people forget oftentimes how important the arts are to the community. I mean, we give so much, um, we give so much importance to technology and all these things, which is great as well, but the arts are also important. So thank you. Um, and then I would like to ask, how can the community of Mountain View help support the Western Ballet? I would say being present. Um, getting to know who we are, getting to know our mission, um, sending people our way, uh, being present on all our performances. We uh, have an Oatcracker every year, every year right here in the Mountain View Center for the Performing Art. We also have 
a full-length ballet, a story ballet, every year presented by our own students. So, and also we have a huge uh, open program for adults. Yes, any age, you can go over there and we'll give you an education starting from the very, very, very bottom of it and climbing up to the different levels over, of course, many years. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible that you guys offer all that. And exactly like you guys, um, being present and just right, just being there and supporting the performances and everything that you guys have to offer. So. Right. There are a lot of um, groups that come here to the Mountain View Center that are from other areas, but we're local nonprofit, you know, we have very high quality performances. It's not just a little recital. You'd be blown away, you know, when you see the production levels. So it'd be so we, we are always really excited when we see people and hear that they came to our shows and they just saw it in the magazine. You know, there's just a community member. So that's wonderful to yeah. have that support. And uh, they're usually filmed by a local t television station. You guys. Yes. So it's a uh, it's a wonderful work because we're all non-profit, providing a great service to Mountain View and uh, the other areas as well. Wow, well, I'm happy that KMVT could be part of that support that you guys need. And that's what it's all about, right? The communities yeah. helping each other. Um, I, I think you guys kind of already answered that, but if you guys don't mind expanding more, why is it so important for the community to be exposed to the arts like ballet? Well, like you were saying, you know, the technology field is wonderful, but, you know, art touches our souls. And so we need, and it's interesting, actually, our very large adult program is chiefly made up of technology workers that want to come and put their mind into something else, some beauty. And so, and as well, of course, for children, I mean, the discipline of the art is just a whole different outlet for them than just their academics or sports. Sports are wonderful too, but this is just, you know, it's like learning a classical instrument, but it's with your, your body as the instrument. So, well, yeah. Thank you so much for your guys' time today. We really enjoyed talking to you guys. And I'm honestly really looking forward to trying to check out that production of The Nutcracker you guys talked about. And you can try our classes. Yes, definitely. You've always no. wanted to dance. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely signing yeah. up for that one. Yeah, definitely. You should give it a try and encourage others to try it. Uh, we have so many students very happy about it. Um, they were able to replace, in a sense, the gym with something new yes. that involves music and where their body is the instrument, right? So it's, it's a wonderful thing to have the arts around. Um, without art, I think the world will be totally different. I completely agree. Like you said, art touches the soul and we need more of that, especially in today's world. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Please check out Western Ballet and their classes and their performances and just everything they have to offer. And uh, now we're gonna head over to another street interview. Hi again. We're here with Felicia from Skin Care by Felicia. Hello, everyone. She does uh, uh, bathing products. One of her uh, taglines is the art of bathing. Uh, tell us about your, your business. Oh, gladly. So I started in 2009. It is a line of skincare products, including soaps, creams, scrubs, lip balms. And a lot of it is made with shea butter, organic shea butter out of Uganda, or with olive oil based soaps. And I do it to make sure that everyone's skin feels fabulous and yummy. And so you make all of the products I yourself? Make everything. I have a studio in downtown Oakland and I make everything. And I have someone who does all the wrapping for me for the soaps, but I've been doing it, like I say, about 13, 14 years. Oh, that's great. And do you like to visit the uh, art and wine festivals around the Bay Area? I do. I do a lot of art and wine and also craft shows. And on Fridays and Sundays, you can find me at the Farmer's Market in Oakland. That's great. How often have you come to the Mountain View Festival? This is my first time. Oh, that's I've heard great. good things about it. And I have, I have a friend of mine who raves about it. He is a couple doors down in the... Uh, and I so far, so good. That's great. Maybe you'll come visit us again next year. So far, yeah. I love it so far. It's been going great. This really smells wonderful inside of the booth here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's all essential oils. I try to go for something that's very high quality, beautiful, not overpowering. So, I've Thanks very it. much. You're very welcome. Good luck to you. Thank you. Hi, we're back again, and we're with an amazing person, 
and his first name is Butana. Hey, Butana, how are you today? I'm all right, and you? I'm doing really well, thank you. I am now. Uh, you're a very happy man, and I love that. Man, life is beautiful, isn't it? That's great. Hey, Butana, tell me a little bit about your art and how you came to do this. You know, my art really represents where I come from. I was born in Soweto, South Africa, in Johannesburg. And, and as you can see, everything about it says South Africa, right? You have a black, strong woman cooking outside. You have Cape Town, South Africa, right there. You have Kenya. That's a Maasai man. Maasai, the Maasai people are special to me right now because they're displaced. Um, they're losing a lot of their land. And as, if you've heard, they, they, hunt, uh, they hunt lions, right? And that's about to stop. Um, because they're getting controlled. So my, my work represents where I was born. You know, it, it comes from my soul. It's like a gift. Every time I see my work on somebody else's wall, it's like I've put the continent on the wall. So. That really is beautiful. Thank so you. tell me, how long have you been doing this? You know, I started um, pencil drawing at age 13. Um, I only started painting using acrylic and oil um, since 2019. Well, let me ask you a question. You pointed out this beautiful woman, yes. and she's cooking in a metal pot. Yes. Is that traditional, and can you explain that to us, the difference from cooking on the ground as opposed to cooking on maybe a, a stove? Yes, so. Well, I mean, the first question, is it is it typical? Yes. In, in, in villages in South Africa and villages all over Africa, you find a lot of women, black women like that, cooking food on the ground, making fire like that. It, it is normal, it is common that food is probably going to feed a village, not just a family. Because in Africa, families are villages, right? Tons and tons of people are family. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people talk now, today, about global warming and sustainable development. I believe that in Africa we've been doing sustainable development since I was born. So I ate food coming from that pot and you'll be, you'll, you'll, it's unbelievable the amount of flavor that comes from it. It's like, it's like a barbecue, right? When you take chicken, put it in, a, in an oven and you roast it and you eat chicken cooked on, on, on fire outside, flavor's different. Same. Um, um, facts apply, the same techniques apply. And, 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 and this is common. If you went to South Africa today and you went to a village, you will find someone cooking on the floor and, and cooking for a whole range of people. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bhutan, this is beautiful. And I noticed you painted Table Mountain over there. Yes, that yes, correct? yes, that's Cape Town. That's the, that's the most southern po uh, end of the African continent. It's a beautiful city. It's lovely, beautiful people. It's really diverse. In America, you hear the word melting pot. That place is a real melting pot. You find everyone from all over the world in that place. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you, is this your first year at the Mountain View Festival? Yes, this is my first year at the Mountain View Festival. How did you know that? I didn't. <laughs> I was just pure luck. Yeah, but uh, did you have to travel far to get here today? We live in Evergreen, south of San Jose. So we traveled about 30 minutes, 20 minutes drive out of, out of traffic, yeah. And do you have many of these kind of fairs that you go to in the year? How many would that be? We have another one um, next week, Santa Clara Art and Wine Festival. Those are the only two we're going to do this year. Um, as you can see, our work is not print. It's acrylic on canvas. It takes a lot of time to make. Um, so we're only going to do those two, uh, fest these two festivals this year. Yeah. Well, I'm honored that I got to meet you today. And I'm honored that you have such a great smile and we met. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, I'll just, back to you. Appreciate it. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us again here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. On this beautiful day, there's an amazing breeze going on. I'm just in, really enjoying it, especially after all this hot weather that's been going on. And now we have an interview with Peter Katz, who is a member of the Chamber of Com Commerce here at Mountain View. Not only is he a member, he's the CEO and president of the Chamber of Commerce. So, Peter, before we get into that, tell me a little bit about the shirt you've got going on. That is a beautiful shirt. Thank you very much for asking. We actually, since this is our 50th anniversary of the Art and Wine Festival, we want to do something really special. And there's lots of things going special today, but one of the things was we had a t-shirt contest. And the winner is a local artist. She's uh, in her early 20s, and in that booth right over there at the corner of Church and Castro, please come by and check out her uh, booth. This is Elaine Giles, and so she did this special design, and it is on our cups, it is on our shirts, it is on our uh, uh, towels, tote bags. We have a whole merchandising tent just a couple blocks away. Oh, that is fantastic to hear. I'm glad a local artist won that competition. Anyway, I was curious. Could you tell us, and the viewers at home, of course, 
what exactly does the Chamber of Commerce do? Well, great question. One of the things the Chamber of Commerce does is tries to promote local businesses. And so we do a lot of work to help businesses do marketing. We put on events like the Art and Wine Festival, but also Taste of Mountain View, also the City Annual Update and, um, you know, several other things. Um, because the idea here is how can we get people to come downtown, come to our other shopping areas? How can they learn about our businesses? How can they enjoy our businesses? And this has been extremely important in the last couple of years with COVID. You know, how do we get the word out? How do you shop local? And I have to say that one of the things that's really amazing about Mountain View is the Chamber of Commerce helps the small business, but we also help the larger companies too. Um, whether they be, you know, world-renowned companies that everybody knows or mid-level ones that they're just trying to break through, um, we provide a forum for their voice as well. The, what I was going to say about the, the pandemic and all was that the big companies really understood that they had to help the small companies too. So there was a lot of charitable work that went on. There were a lot of grants that went on. There were a lot of programs in terms of, you know, eat local, dine local, that kind of thing going on. And uh, we really loved seeing this synergy um, between uh, the, the two sides. That is wonderful to hear. How did you get involved with the Chamber of Commerce? You are the CEO. Did you found it? I did not. It was founded 100 years ago. I certainly wasn't around back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've only been the CEO for a little under three years. And um, I was in tech for 25 years and in nonprofit work for the next 15 and uh, was kind of looking for a next opportunity. And one of the former CEOs took me to lunch. and He said, you should think about this. And I did. And uh, what can I say? I'm here. And here you are. What can the people at home do to help the city of Mountain View? What can they do to improve business? Wonderful question. Um, so one of the things that we believe at the chamber is that a healthy tree cannot grow in unhealthy soil. And so many of the things that businesses are doing are things to help the community, such as local artists. So we have a program to support local artists. Some of it has to do with local leadership and how do you develop young leaders? We have a program called Leadership Mountain View to do that. And so people can get involved with a lot of the community programs. Of course, there's the business side of it. And I would be remiss to not say, please come and shop, come and um, eat. Um, one of the things that is interesting about that the pandemic really put a spotlight on was a lot of our businesses just did not have a robust online presence. There's nothing that beats feet in the door. So I want to encourage people to really visit. There's no substitute for really being in touch, being in person, and, and really living, breathing what, what is down here. Living and breathing in Mountain View, that sounds wonderful. How can the public find out more about the Chamber of Commerce? So we do have a website. It's chambermv, as in Mountain View, dot org. Chambermv dot org, it's easy to remember. You guys have any social medias? We do. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Uh, we are on uh, oh, a couple of others, too. I just can't remember them all. I'm, I'm, I'm too old to remember all of the different <laughs> platforms. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Uh, I am curious. Is the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce a nonprofit or part of Mountain View government itself? Very great question. A lot of people don't understand this, but the Chamber of Commerce is independent from the city. Uh, we are a membership driven organization. We are a 501c6, that is a nonprofit, and we have also a 501c3 nonprofit arm as well, which is the, the Chamber of Commerce Foundation. Oh, so people can donate to you guys. Absolutely. To support your mission. They can donate to the chamber, they can donate to one of the programs that we support. They can also donate to a program we have called Scholarship Mountain View. Last year, we gave out 19 scholarships to deserving local high school students. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much, Peter. Are, are there any other programs we should know about, like the scholarships? Well, there's there's always uh, something going on. And so I do encourage people to check out the website. Yes. I encourage them to sign up for our newsletter or our Facebook feed or whatever, because, um, you know, this is a vibrant place. Things come up all the time. And of course, in the last two years, things came up like this. And yes. so a lot of people turn to us for their latest information. You know, where, where are the latest pop-ups for testing, things like that. So. We do a lot of programs that are in the public service and also in the service of business because the two go together so, so strongly. That's wonderful to hear. One last question. What's your favorite thing you've seen so far today at the Art Wine Festival that you guys have so lovingly put on? You know, my favorite thing to see really is the fact that we have so many people who have come out and all the, the that sounds trite, but all the smiling faces. And I've had a chance to talk to a lot of the patrons, as well as the merchants who are selling things, as well as some of the booth operators. 
and everybody is saying it's just so great to see each other again. In fact, I think the one thing that stands out to me the most was someone who came up to me and says, it feels like old home week. And that I just love. That's good to hear. Thank you, Peter. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. And that was Peter Katz, who was uh, so amazing for giving us his time today and also showing off this amazing shirt. I'm definitely gonna have to check out that booth later. Rocking the shirt. Um, and now let's check out what's going on uh, in the street interview. Hi again, we're back with Sybil yes. <laughs> from Sensations by Sybil, a hat shop here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival today. How are you doing? Good, how are you? How are you? Great that it's not so hot today. <laughs> yeah, it's humid, but it's not yes, quite as yes. hot as it has been. A little more bearable. Yeah. Tell me about how you started your, your studio. Well, I started in 1992. Um, I started with floral pieces for the hair, and then I worked my way into hats and doing floral. And then I started painting on hats about 10 years ago. So I do all my own artwork on the hats. So I do a smidgen of everything, yeah, in here. So, so you start with a hat and you do all the artwork and design yes, and stuff. 100%, 100%. This is full of a lot of hats. It's yeah. certainly worth the trip just to see what's Thank here. Thank you so much. How yeah. long have you been visiting uh, uh, art and wine festivals? Art, I started in 1992 in Southern California, and then I started Mountain View 1993. Your studio is in Oceanside. In Oceanside, yes, yes. Coming from the beach, but I come up here to the Bay Area a lot and do many festivals, so I enjoy it. A lot That's of great. great people. That's great. So you have to be wearing a hat today. Yes, always, yes. One of the chiffon creations, yes. One of the things. Well, it's a beautiful shop, and it's certainly worth the trip to come see. Thank you so much. Appreciate the business and everybody coming down. We're finally here from 2019. Come on down. That's Happy right. <laughs> That's right. That's great. Well, thank you. Enjoy the day. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Hi, we're back, and we're with Teresa from Hardwood Creations. How are you today? I'm doing really well, thank you. Good. Teresa, tell us a little bit about how you make these and and what how intricate, like, let's say this, something like this. Okay, so um, my, my brother is the artist here and he's been doing this for 45 years since he was like 18 years old. So something like this, he's gonna be He's going to be cutting the wood in a, in a, with a dovetail joint, and then he's going to be putting them together, laminating them together. These are all different kinds of hardwoods. There are no stains, no dyes. Um, just, there's maple, oak, purple heart, sapili, African paduke, um, just all different hardwoods from various parts of the world. They're the densest, best quality wood on the market. Teresa, where do you get your wood? Because I would think anything that's that exotic would be very hard to get. Um, it is hard to get, um, but you know, it's like part of what we do is source the wood, and everything is also sus uh, certified sustainably grown. Um, so it's a lot of work because sometimes we get it, source it from one place, sometimes another place. Uh, we're very careful about about sourcing. Oh, that's very interesting. Now, tell me, where are you located, and what is your website? So um, the wood shop is in Woodland, um, appropriately enough, and uh, the, the website is AmericanMadeWoodArt.com. And when we talk about up north near Sacramento, is that correct? Sacramento. Yes, yep, it was hot this week. <laughs> it was hot in the shop. <laughs> so when you came down here today, what temperature did you leave up there? Um, well, fortunately it's not as hot today, but I gotta say, if you guys feel warm after 116 degree weather, I almost feel like I need a sweater. Now, tell me just a little bit more. I, how long have you been coming to the fair? It's been decades. I don't even remember um, our first show, but we've been coming here every year for decades. Now, do you go to any other fairs like around your area or in California? Sure, yeah. This is how we've been making our living for years now. Um, so in the Sacramento area and here in the South Bay, absolutely. Well, you know, I've always been curious. When I see booths like this, and it's lovely, I have to say, and the bat gammon boards and everything that you have here, when it's rainy and when it's cold, is that when you're doing most of your work? Um, we do this all year round. This is, you know, this is a... a a livelihood. Um, it, the wood shop is indoors in the winter time. You know, we'll do indoor shows if it's rainy. Um, yeah, no, this is how we make a living. That's very interesting. So you get around. We get around. 
Well, we're we, just beautiful stuff. Thank you for being with us and explaining all of that to us. It's a pleasure. Thank it's a pleasure. And now, back to you. And we're back. We're still here in Mountain View, California. It is still a lovely day. And actually, what's caught my attention recently is the music. There is such lovely music going on here at the Art Wine Festival. What's your favorite you've heard so far today? I've been hearing a lot of covers, um, some from Guns N' Roses, which I'm always a fan of 80s music, so I was really excited to hear that. And then I've been hearing recently some classical music, so you got a mix of everything. So there's something for everyone over here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. So I'm just another one of the things I love about the festival. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a little Beethoven to spice up the day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it is, it's a good place to be. We've got trails, we've got everything. This is the biggest art and wine festival I think I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, I just another reason why Mountain View is just killing it with the art and wine festival. Gotta love it. Um, speaking of what's going on in the streets, um, I think we have another street interview that we need to check out. Hi again, we're here with Joseph Keller of Chef Joseph's Gourmet Seasoning Blends. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Tell us a bit about your product. Okay, my six seasoning blends are made with a third pink Himalayan salt and then 10 different herbs and spices in it. So they're gluten-free and there's only organic stuff in there. And you make all of these blends yourself? Yeah, they're blended in Sonoma County. So I came for, I'm lived up there for over 30 years. I had a restaurant there and four years ago I started doing this. So. So you had two restaurants, you had told me. Yeah, one was a French restaurant, La Provence, and the other one was Chef Joseph's in the Hotel La Rose. Oh, well, that's fantastic. And so you've been making the blends, though. Yeah, I used them in the restaurant before, and then um, for Christmas I used to give them away, and then I started four years ago to sell them, too. So. Oh, well, that's great. So now do you go around to other art and wine festivals? I do. I do about uh, 35 a year festivals all over the Bay Area. So you stay in the Bay Area? Stay in the Bay Area, yeah. yeah. All right, well that's great. And so then you uh, um, make, do, do you have a, a, a kitchen where you do all of the blends? I blend them. I used to be the director of food operation at Meals on Wheels. So, and I still do consultant work for them, and so they let me use their kitchen. I have to have a professional kitchen to make it. So that's where I make them. So. Oh, well, that's very good. So now, uh, tell me something about uh, the when you go to the festivals, how you, you know, meeting other vendors, and I haven't seen so many of the, the seasoning type uh, vendors. Not that many around, and because it's a lot of work to do them, but they are, I do it for promotion because I have about a hundred stores in the Greater Bay Area. So I promote the store and then also the sale of the thing. So yeah. Oh, that's great. And so now, do you still continue? This looks like you have a huge number of, of blends here. Yeah, I got six and two in the works. Okay, so you continue to develop. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> you always have to come up with something new. That's what people want. Yeah. That's great. So you continue to cook. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love cooking still. <laughs> that's it. That's great. So uh, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Nice talking to you. And welcome to the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival and enjoy your, enjoy your weekend. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That changed my life. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. We're soldiers, always ready to protect our country. But we've also got communities family, friends, neighbors who count on us. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life to somebody from my hometown. See what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. My name is Carly. I'm 15 years old and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor. I've been saved twice, so who says I can't save somebody else? <laughs> this gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. This is the 
the city where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital deadwalkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude! Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones. My name is Caitlin. I'm six years old. I like to go to the beach with my cousins. When I was a baby, I was very sick. And then I got a liver transplant from an organ donor. He saved my life. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Please help us at KMVT to make your public television station the best in the Bay Area. You've got the best producers, so please give us your support. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tessa. And my name is Inbar. And you're watching KMVT 15. If I didn't find golf, I honestly wouldn't know what I would do because that's golf is basically half my life. Since I'm 16 right now, and I've been doing it since I was eight. So if I didn't have golf, I don't know what I would be doing. Young people are our future. It's just that simple. Many of our young people need help. They need support. They need help. They need direction. And golf is a great venue to do that. Essentially, Youth On Course is all about access. We provide access to golf courses. We're also about providing access for youth to job opportunities and also higher education. Golf, it's very mental and I like how it would challenge me. Not only my physical game, but I would have to like mentally get prepared through a bad shot. I've been a Youth and Course member for four years. Golf has taught me about responsibility. To have honesty when you play. Get out and get involved with these programs and especially Youth on Course. see you and they see that you're doing stuff and they like that. They want you to be a role model for them. Sitting and talking to a parent and helping them understand the importance of their involvement. Going to the Capitol, writing letters, trying to get funding for our schools and not giving up. We are from all different communities, all different points on the political spectrum, but what unites us is that we are all here for children. Santa Clara Valley Water District presents Laundry Tips for a Better World. Are you a laundry day procrastinator? Good news! Put it off even longer. Wait until you have a full load and you'll save 20 gallons per wash. That's over 5,000 gallons per year per home. And just think of the water you'll save with a new high-efficiency washer. Can you say rebate check? As for the missing socks, well, they're still missing. For a better world, save 20 gallons today. Hi, I'm Brad Wardle, Fire Chief for the City of Mountain View. As an emergency medical service provider, our department has long been committed to increasing the survival rates of cardiac arrest victims. To further these efforts, I am proud to announce our partnership with the Pulse Point Foundation and with El Camino Hospital. This innovative app alerts CPR trained citizens by smartphone of a sudden cardiac arrest near them and provides the location of the victim and the nearest automatic external defibrillator. Deployment of the Pulse Point app can significantly strengthen the chain of survival by improving citizen response to those who suffer a cardiac arrest prior to the arrival of EMS.
please watch the following video of a cardiac incident and then join our team by signing up for the Pulse Point app. Together we can save even more lives. Hi, I'm Seth Shostak, and I'm the host of Silicon Valley Buzz, a monthly program here on KMVT. Well, KMVT, you might say, you know, do we need this? Is it important? You bet it is, because you can watch the national news. You can watch the news from San Francisco. You're not getting the news right here where you live. If that matters to you, if your quality of life matters, if the future of your kids matters, KMVT matters. We could use some new equipment here at this station to keep up with the changing technological times. So. Uh, consider giving a contribution to KMVT because it's your station. And thank you so much for coming back from our break. Um, once again, we're here at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival, and we're really excited for um, just to be here and for our next interview. Yes. Brian Kaczynski, Director of Leadership Mountain View. That is a wonderful thing to hear. What exactly is Leadership Mountain View? Leadership Mountain View, thank you for asking and thank you for having me, but Leadership Mountain View is a program that is in its 31st year, and it is a civic engagement program to teach people all about the city with the hope that when they get through it and they know about the nonprofits and the police and fire department and how city government works that they will become more civically actively engaged afterwards so one way to say that is not everybody that graduates becomes the mayor but almost every mayor and city council member has been through this program and then moved on to become more actively engaged in the community Oh, that's wonderful to hear. So Leadership Mountain View is teaching civic skills and hope is the hope that people will become future leaders after completing the program? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, you, you can become a leader if, if you know something, friends or family, but the idea of Leadership Mountain View is to really increase your network, right? So the program runs for nine months. It's typically the third Friday of each month, so a full day of training, yeah. and each day has a theme. So one day you learn about the city government. The next day you learn about the education community uh, facilities, if you will, and um, you know, public safety um, and the nonprofits. So by the end of the program, you really understand how the city operates, and, and really importantly, what the city needs are of, of help with, with the people who live here and, and enjoy 
this wonderful city. Yeah. How long does the program typically run and when does it usually start? Yes, it's a great question. It uh, starts in September and it ends in May, typically one Friday a month. Sometimes we slip in an extra class, but it's a nine month program. Oh, that's exciting to hear. Um, why is leadership important? Oh my, just look at our society right now. Um, you know, without getting into details of red state, blue state, or any of that, um, to survive as a human race, we need to connect with people and understand that everybody, I think, wants a good life. So when you meet people face to face, you have a better chance of understanding that we're all human. We all need to support each other, right? Uh, and one thing that I learned when I went through the program in 2020 is that I, if I focused on politics at all, it was at the national, at the federal level. And what I learned going through the program myself is that it's at the local level where you can really make a difference. Yeah, people underestimate the value of local politics. Certainly. Absolutely. But it sounds like it's largely about empathy. Is that correct? I think it is a really good way to look at it. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to teach people leadership skills. Obviously, it's more than that because it's learning about connecting with all aspects of city government and how the city operates. But if we can all understand each other and be empathetic, this will be even a greater place to live. So what is something the average person can do? What is one little thing they can do to improve their leadership skills, to better connect with their people and network? It's all about communications in my personal ex experience, right? Um, leadership is a pretty big topic, um, but I think a lot of people leave leadership up to the mayor. If they're working at Google or Microsoft or LinkedIn, they leave it up to the executive management. Everybody can be a leader by noticing what needs to get done and taking action on it. And to do that, you have to listen and you have to be able to communicate. I would think you could walk into any company or any city government, and if you said, what's their major problem? If they could communicate better, they could do better. So it's about ground up and people seeing things and taking leadership in their own life. Have you gone through this program? You're really good at this. <laughs> um, S, ground up, ground up. No, yeah. Not wait for somebody to do something. Find out where this, where your community needs help and do something about it by connecting with other people and banding together to make the, the city and the world and thus the world a better place. I love to hear that. Thank you very much. Where can people find out more about Leadership Mountain View? You can go to our website, which is lnv.education, or you can call me at 650-279-9853. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much again for your time today. And uh, let's check out another street interview. Hi again. We're here with Tim Aston of Aston Meyer Photography. Uh, Tim is a landscape, a landscape photographer and his wife does uh, composite images, some fantasy images and some really beautiful work with, uh, with composites. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How long have you been doing photography? Uh, so I've been doing it seriously for about uh, 14 years um, and just recently struck out to do it full time about two years ago. And uh, where do you, where's your studio? Uh, so we live in Mammoth Lakes, California uh, on the Eastern Sierra uh, and there's just so much fantastic uh, landscape photography out there. So most of, the, most of these images are within the last year and a half um, and most of it's within two hours of where we live. And you do all of the, uh, the image processing and take all of the pictures yourself? Yeah, so I, I, do, I, do, um, I do my own printing. I like to go from start to finish, from taking the image, editing the image, printing the image. So I like, I like full control of all of those parts. Um, but we also do offer frameless options that I have to do. I have to send out to a print shop for those. Oh, well, that's good. And so you were teaching biology, you said. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I normally teach high school biology. Um, I'm on leave of absence at Gunn High School. Um, and just so that I could uh, get out there and, and, and try landscape photography full time. Because it's, it's very different, uh, you know, shooting on vacations where the conditions you get are the conditions you get 
versus being able to return over and over and over again to the same spots until I get the conditions I like. Right, right. That is beautiful. So now, how about your wife? How does she do her work, like this image that we have back here? Uh, so that, that's me. That's my only composite image. Um, but this one over here, this is her work. Okay. So this one right here is, uh, so I really like the idea of it. It's called uh, Last Frontiers um, because it is looking at the two things we know the least about, the deep space and deep ocean. Um, so... It's an image of the Orion Nebula, uh, and then the jellyfish are from the Long Beach Aquarium. Um, kind of mix them together. And uh, yeah, the jellyfish already look like flying saucers, so it, it, the theme fits. Well, this is really beautiful work. Thank I can you. see that you know, you've got quite a quite subject matter when you're up there in the mountains. Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And then do you, uh, do you sell online also? Yeah, so our website, uh, astonmeyerphotography.com, um, and I also teach classes because I have that uh, classroom experience. That's great. Well, that was really good, and I hope that you enjoy your weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. And do well. Hi, we're back, and we're in a booth that I think is very unique, and we're here with Eric today, and Eric, could you give us the name of your company? Eric Calvillo Fine Art. And do you have a web uh, page that maybe if somebody sees this, they might be interested in getting a hold of you? Yes, it's ericalvillo.art. Okay, that sounds great. Now tell me, how long have you been doing this beautiful artwork? Uh, I've been doing it full time since about 2017, but I've been working towards it since 2014. That's interesting. Now, did you become formally trained or did you pick this up on your own? You're just very talented because it's very good. Uh, I've always loved drawing and painting, but I never wanted to pursue it professionally until about 2014. And what were you doing before that? Uh, I was a cook, a line cook at, uh, at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Yeah. Is that right? Now, that's a very interesting switchover, isn't yeah, it? it is. Well, let me ask you. I'm just going to ask you to just move back a little bit because I would like to ask you about this because it caught my eye. Can you tell us where you get the creation, what comes to your head, and how you make this and what materials you're using? Uh, it's oil on board it's in a handmade wooden frame. And uh, the whole thing started with I just wanted to create a study where I had well, forced myself to draw lots of hands because hands can be very difficult to paint. And so... I just want, it started with that, and I just wanted, I was thinking, what do I make this wave of hands doing? And I wanted to be supporting someone. And then so it's supporting her, and she's kind of blindfolded because she's, uh, she's just showing determination. She's just continuing what she's doing, knowing that she's well being supported. And where did you get the inspiration for her drawing, um, the music? She's holding a violin in her hand, and it's a skeleton. So how does that come to you? I I've just always loved skeletons, but I wanted to her to be expressing herself in some way, and I just thought her playing the violin would kind of just contribute to the mood. Now, do you have a kind of format where you like a particular color, or is there something else here that maybe you'd like to show us or tell us about? I, I just love doing the, like, I'm a big fan of ultramarine, so I really do, I do lots of blues, but my, everything kind of varies in color. As you can see behind me, I love painting the moon. That's kind of a common theme in a lot, a lot of the pieces that I do. That is beautiful. And then I wanted to ask you, and I'm going to move over here. Let, you, you changed the color scheme here and you went to balloons. Now, what would that be about? Oh, this one's uh, uh, it's Pennywise from the Stephen King's It. Yeah, so it's Stephen King, it's uh, Pennywise the Clown, and he just kind of just has the people floating there. Now, do you make the frames for that yourself? Yeah, I make the frames. They're handmade wooden frames. And where are you located? Uh, Las Vegas, but I, I'm always de frequently down in here in the Bay Area. I'm originally from San Jose. Oh, you are? Okay. Well, I had an opportunity to live there for a little while, too. Yeah. So when you said Bellagio, I kind of lit up. Yeah. Well, that's great. And so what year is this that you've been with the festival? Uh, this is the second year. I mean, uh, I did it first in 2019, but COVID, obviously, we, yeah, we didn't have those years. Yeah. And when you left Las Vegas, I'm going to ask you a question. How hot was it there? Oh, it's brutal, but, uh, I mean, we, <laughs> we have nice weather about four or five months out of the year, so it's just kind of, yeah. I mean, there's a few hot months, but that's why I travel. I come down here, do some shows, and it, it's great. Oh, it's been really fun talking to you, and I'm going to just thank you so much for taking the time and being with us, and good luck to you, and be safe driving back to Las Vegas. Thank okay. you so much. And back to you. Hello, welcome back. Once again, we're here at the Art and Wine Festival in Mountain View. 
And we're so excited today. We're going to have a little interview with Sophia Cheng from the Community Services Agency. So, Sophia. Hello. Hello. I got to ask you, what is your favorite thing here so far at the Art and Wine Festival? <clears throat> I love the food, <laughs> the drink. Oh, yeah. My favorite. We've been going around places many times looking for the best food here. <laughs> yes. That's good. That's good. So, in your own words, what is the mission of the Community Service Center? Okay. The mission of Community Services Agency will help people. We are we like like a safe net, safe net. We bring people together and provide our resources and we help people later on become independent. You know. They maybe had some hard time during the, the a period of time. Uh, we just help them out you now so they can become independent. So that's our main mission. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I understand that you work for senior services, correct? Right, that's correct. Uh, what does senior services do? Okay, in our senior service department, we it, actually we divide two departments. One senior services we uh, we have seniors who are over fifty-five years old who lives in Montreal, Los Altos. If they have some you now some needs, you now maybe they are alone by themselves, you now and they need some navigate how to use you now government you now assistance then they are in senior services, that's a long term. They can be for now a couple of years. And the other departments which I'm working for is called Integrate Behavioral Health, not Integrate Behavioral not Intensive Care Management. So in that department, we had two nurses and one social worker. And this department is for people now, a uh, senior who had chronic health conditions, when they just get out from hospital, they need someone to help them to stabilize in, in their house to arrest them. So we we'll help them like a uh, advocate in doctor's appointments, uh, medication management, and also some other stuff like, you know, they need, probably they need some uh, caregiver. Uh, we we'll help them to apply you now. IHS provider, you know, so someone can, can help them out to take care of them. Maybe we we'll also on mails and we check on them. Sometimes we do home visit to see if they are safe at home and some other stuff. You know. Just and this, this is like a short term, uh, short term program. We have people on board around one years and people, a lot of senior they don't drive. That's a main, the main problems. So we had uh, transportation assistance. We help senior. We can help to call like a Google conference or VTA parent transit, transit. Help them to get to doctor's appointments in you now in a timely manner. And uh, a lot of stuff we can of our main purpose is to help seniors become healthy so they are able to stay at home and enjoy their life. That's good. That's good. This sounds like a wonderful nonprofit. Where can people find out more? Actually, no, they can go to our website or they can just drop in our office and ask for our now. You can, uh, you can uh, connect us with now uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, or just real person to ask for the, uh, everyone is uh, Montreal and or in Los Altos. Some people from Sunnyvale, they are eligible for our service. That's very good. Thank you very much, Sophia. It's Appreciate. been a pleasure to talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much again for joining us. And here's another street interview. Hi again. We're here with Percival Levy yes. of Percy's Pie, straight from Louisiana with well, his uh, anyway. <laughs> Louisiana sweet potato pie. Hi, tell me about you your, tell me about your pies. Well, it's a uh, an old family recipe, and um, I've been been developing it. And um, I couldn't find a good sweet potato pie, so I ended up making it myself. And uh, surprise is something that everyone seemed to like. So, Where do you have your kitchen? Uh, we have a kitchen out in Watsonville. We have an incubator kitchen called Pajaro in uh, in in um, Watson Watsonville. And uh, we live in Marina, and we you know that's where we do the kitchen and everything. So that's where we store the pies and make all the pies and everything. Where do, where is that? Um, in the, down in Monterey County, actually Watsonville oh, is in where, Santa Cruz. Yeah, I know where yeah. Pajaro Dunes is. So uh, uh, where the kitchen is down there too? It, yeah, that's where the kitchen is in Pajaro at, at the Pajaro River over there. That's yeah. where it is called. Yeah. It's really nice. A lot of fun. 
<laughs> oh, that's great. So tell me about the pies. These are all little, small, individual yeah, pies. We do the big ones, too. But um, um, I make a, uh, four different flavors. I do uh, original, praline liqueur, coffee liqueur, and ginger snap cookie. And it's unique because everyone that makes sweet potato pie just makes sweet potato pie. I, I have to make those flavors to make it more interesting. So you developed all the flavors yes. yourself? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I well, my, my wife would kill me if I didn't come home with a sweet potato pie, so I'm going to have one of each. Yes, okay. You have a full set. That's what we call it, a full set. So we'll make sure you get a full set, okay? That sounds great. <laughs> so how long have you been baking the pies, did you say? It's been about, it's been about eight years, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun coming to these events and having some fun. Usually around um, um, Thanksgiving, we blow up. We do the big ones for Thanksgiving. So special orders, if people want to call, we can make some orders for them and set it up that way. But it's just a lot of fun just having, having fun with people really enjoying the pie. The, the, the common word is wow. That's what I hear. <laughs> for sure. How long have you been coming to the Mountain View Festival? Um, this is our third time. This is our third time here. So we had to skip uh, the, after the yes. pandemic. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how far do you travel to, to festivals? Um, we've gone up as far as Sacramento. And we decided not to do that because it's too hot. <laughs> it's been pretty hot here this yes, week, so it's yes. nicer today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I like the clouds out a little bit. You know, you know, coming from Monterey, we're used to the clouds. So, <laughs> just so. Well, thank you very much. Thank I, you for having me. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> I'll make sure you go with those pies because I don't want your wife to be out on the weekend. <laughs> I'm going to go with the pies. <laughs> thank you very much. That's and it. Back to you. Welcome back to the lovely Mountain View Art and Wine Festival. Uh, right now we have an interview with Carlo, Carlos Ariola from the Day Workers Nonprofit. Thank you, Carlos, for joining us today. And then I was just wondering if you could just please let our viewers at home know more about uh, the Day Workers Center and what it's all about. So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, and again, uh, so it's a pleasure to you know, be able to talk about the center and be able to let the folks know in the community like, who we are, what we do. Uh, so the Day Worker Center is a nonprofit uh, at Day Worker Center, which connect day workers with people in the community uh, 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 if we're looking for help with projects or help with their house. Uh, also, uh, folks, a place where day workers can come and register with us, and based on their skills, availability, they can go out to work. I'm um, giving you like a little, it's more to that, but giving you a simple gist to it. But in, 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 in a nutshell, really, if you're an employer, let's say, looking for someone to come and help you with the, like, or looking for help, for instance, let's say someone to help you, like, uh, you know, clean the garden or someone to help you paint the, paint the, the, the fence or something, you know, reach out to us either, you know, online or and call us, you know, give us a call or come in person. I mean, because of COVID, we have been asking folks to contact us virtually, but um, still, we also welcome you, of course, if you come in person. Uh, let us know, like, what the uh, what kind of help you need. So you need stuff against a painter or someone. Uh, let us know for uh, when would you like the worker, how many hours you think they'll be to be working, um, and then from there we'll cut, we'll start looking for the workers, the members of the center. Um, once we found the worker with the skills and the availability, we'll go ahead and uh, reach out to you. The worker then is dispatched to to y'all, um, and then we go ahead and then. Um, the workers then, uh, you know, performs the test, and then they are paid for every each hour that they uh, that they work. But all the money goes to the worker; none of it comes to us. As a nonprofit, we do not charge the the folks who wish to use our services for both members of the center who wish to come to a center and look for work to get connected with employers. All the, when they go out to work, all the money goes to them. So as well for employers who are looking for for help, um, you know, we don't charge them. So and and also like our our center is there to support folks. Um, at times, for instance, if you go and let's say you get a worker that uh, perhaps um, has the skills but not, you know, quite the, the language, of, like the, for instance, that English is not the second language, for instance, uh, we're there to support you if, in case you need, like, for instance, someone to, you know, relate a message or something or interpret for you. We're there to help. Uh, that sounds like amazing nonprofit. <laughs> thank you, and, thank you, thank I you. I mean, it's great to know that there's a resource like that for people. Yes, yes. Um, so I know that you were, your role in the company is for outreach and education. So can you just expand more about your role in that? Yes, of course. Uh, so as my role is, as, um, as you said, as outreach and education um, coordinator, and my role is to kind of provide the resources that are offered by the county, by the center, by the city, uh, to the community, and also for me to see what's out in the community to provide to the center. So kind of like a, a vice versa uh, type of thing, like, um, for me, like working with Santa Clara County Office of Standards Enforcement, um, where the center is part of the Fair Workplace Collaborative, 
and collectively with other uh, community-based organizations in Santa Clara County, we work to ensure that both workers and employers in the area understand the rights in the workplace and hopes to create a fair workplace for all uh, for folks. So periodically, we have uh, Noi Rights workshops with uh, our with our members of the, co the collective that people can attend virtually. But also at the center, we have uh, workshops for the community as well, and the workshops are like. Um, like workers' right workshops, so people understand like what the what the rights are in the workplace. Um, also, like we are accompanied by a licensed attorney who can answer legal questions because we're not they're not attorneys at the center. But working with the county office of standards enforcement, they do have a free advice line where workers can go ahead and call, and, or anyone who's an employer or worker can call in order for them to get their um, questions answers about like what is minimum wage, uh, if you know what's overtime, etc. Uh, and you know, at the center, we, we have those workshops. You know, not only about workers' rights, but like trying to have about like you know, uh, uh, eco friendly you know, cleaning, uh, you know, worker ethic, uh, work ethic, etc. So, my role is really to kind of be at these events, like the Arts Minds Festival, talk to folks about the center, you know, provide them resources, how to connect with the center, but also like you know, be, uh, working with other organizations on how to provide workshops, but. Uh, and have these workshops with the community. Let them know that you can count on the center in case they have any questions. You know, you can reach out to us. So, um, you know, my role, like my, in, like in a day in the life, is like going to the center. Uh, you know, I, I work on some workshops. I, you know, work with you know, check in with the team, and then we we'll see what events we can attend. And also, like we work with our partners to see what, um, you know, uh, in the community to see what uh, if, uh, workshops we can help and. Uh, and uh, participate in. So let's say like there's a, a, a members of the community that we should have know about their rights like as domestic workers. You know, we, we just had a domestic worker rights training uh, for those that are uh, working and not living in the, uh, in the residence uh, uh, a month ago. So we were having that, that workshop for them, uh, for the members of the community. And we went over what the rights were, uh, also COVID information. But at the end, people were asking questions. So we have that, you know, throughout uh, the month. So apart from me being out in the community, I'm also helping prepare those workshops, um, reviewing material, uh, and also connecting with workers, uh, letting them know that, you know, we're here to help them. So. I mean, that sounds amazing that you guys provide all these workshops for different workers and letting them know about their rights. Yes. Um, is there anything that the community of Mountain View can do to help support this amazing nonprofit? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, if uh, they can definitely, if looking for work uh, or anyone who's looking for work, they come to the center and, and register with us. But those uh, can also support us if you guys, if y'all are like, you know, for those viewers at home looking for help around the project, around the house, you know, someone, like, you know, fall's coming, so we can have a couple events, you know, uh, uh, Halloween, you know, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, maybe have friends and family coming over and need an extra hand. Let us know. We're more than happy to, you know, to help you, uh, you know, for any events. Uh, you can support us, you know, through help, you know, spreading the word about our center. Um, you know, the workers, you know, they have been a lot of them have been in the center for a long time, uh, and it's you know great to know that you know folks in the community hearing like, oh, I've I've used, you know, I've reserved so and so, um, and you know, been doing, I've been. You know, he's been coming to my house for you know years now, and and just it makes my heart happy hearing that, because we know that you know folks can count on us whenever they need us. So, um, you know, if you can you know reach out to us, you know, if um, support us, you know, by spreading the word. If you need you know any help around the house or a project or your business looking for a, a worker or something, let us know. We can go ahead and contact us, and we can you know uh, connect you with the worker. Uh, you know, we also accept in kind donations right now, like masks, um, you know, hand sanitizers, uh, you know, monetary donations as well. Spread the word, you know, on, on Facebook, Instagram, you know, uh, and, you know, reach out to us if you ever need anything. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And to everyone, please uh, help support the Day Worker Center. It sounds like a, an amazing nonprofit. They do so much. And as you hear, um, as you just heard, there's so many ways you can help uh, support, just even by donating something as simple as like what hand sanitizer and different resources like that. Well, thank you so much again for your time today, and uh, let's check out another street interview. Hi, we're back, and we have come to a booth with some beautiful artwork, and I'm with Andy. And Andy, what is the name of your company? Uh, it's Andy Anha, Red Lotus Gallery. That sounds good. <laughs> and let me ask you this: Does Andy have a website? I do. It's andyanha.com. So it's A N D Y A N H H A.com. Thank you. And could you tell me a little bit about the format that you use here? The, the, is this acrylic? 
It is. It's acrylic, um, so I paint directly on wood, and I use mixed medium. So uh, it's acrylics, oil, spray paints, and paint thinners. Uh, paint thinners are used to adjust the viscosities of the acrylic so that all the different mediums can flow, interact, and just kind of form on their own. Um, that's all in wood, and then once that's all set, I finish with an acrylic polymer, which is very similar to epoxy resin. Most people use it on surfboards, bar tops, uh, industrial items like that. Uh, once that's all set, what I do is cut out pieces of film and collage it onto the surface, as you can see here, uh, and I create different shapes, uh, mostly trees, right? Uh, once that's all set, I paint with uh, coats of two primers and two exterior satin paints. Once that's set, then I start meticulously just removing all those little pieces that I had originally placed. And then that's the finishing product. Once well, let me ask you this, Andy. How much, let's say, uh, well, not how much, I want to say how much time do you spend on a product like, let's say, this one behind you? Um, I would say anywhere from three to four weeks. Um, just a lot of layering, a lot of drying processes. Um, it's taken me years to accumulate this process to get to this point, but when I, when I do paint one of these, um, I request at least three to four weeks or so. How did you learn how to do this? Because this is very unique. Uh, pretty much on my own. Um, just self-taught. I did go to art school, uh, University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Uh, go Vols, Rocky Top. Woo! <laughs> right? Um, and but it's my art was so different in college you know i was really trying to find my niche and uh over the past 20 years of creating artwork this is where it's led me to so yeah now where did you come in from today from nashville tennessee you are kidding me so that's a real tennessee yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. so when you woo woo that's what you, <laughs> i got it okay yeah. so um now you're here in california You'll be here today and tomorrow. Where will you go from here? Do you do a bunch in California or work your way back? How does it work? Uh, so I typically just go to one city in particular and do a show, and then I have to go back to my hometown and go to the studio and just continue to produce and make more works. Um, I'll typically sell out at every show. So I brought about 60 to 70, and I probably will leave with, I don't know, four or five paintings left. I mean, that's how it usually is at most of my shows. So uh, that's hence why the reason why I had to go back to my studio and just work and create more. So, yeah. How long have you been coming to this particular festival? Uh, Mountain View, uh, which is one of my favorite shows. I do love it. I love Terry, uh, the promoter here. He's great. Um, and I just enjoy the city overall. I love the people here. Um, this is probably my, I think I want to say eighth year. Eighth. Yeah. That's a long time to be coming. That's really good. And then do you, I guess you have to truck all this stuff in, but you don't have to truck it out. Uh, yeah, that's the goal. That's the, hopefully that's the case, right? <laughs> Less work at the end of the show. Put in all the work right now, and then at the end, just be grateful for everything that, you know, that has happened throughout the weekend and uh, get back to work. We can't thank you enough for being here. I really love your work. It's beautiful. And uh, I guess I will just say take it back to you. Welcome back. It has been a wonderful day here at the Mountain View Art Wine Festival. I, for one, am exhausted. We had some excellent interviews, fantastic guests, great food, good drinks. I highly encourage anyone who didn't get out to get this year to come back next year and just enjoy themselves. This is one of my favorite events every year. I'm so glad to be here. Jamie, what are your thoughts on the day? Corwin, honestly, everything you just said, I completely agree on. An amazing day, just getting to know more about our guests, about the community, and just what makes Mountain View so great. Um, I also loved all the drinks and the food that Mountain View Art and Wine Festival has to offer. I just had a really great time. It's just, this was such a good day and beautiful weather where it's just the right amount of temperature to just uh, walk around and, and just enjoy all the sights and just all the people and just, just, I did not see one sad face while walking around today at the uh -huh. festival. And just like Corwin said, if you haven't checked out the Art and Wine Festival yet, please get out of your house, enjoy some fresh air, enjoy the community, and just see what the lovely city of Mountain View has to offer. I, for one, I'm going to pick up some of this art we saw. Oh my God, some of those were amazing pieces. Delicious. Those paintings, oh. so detailed. Yes, delicious for the eyes, definitely. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> And I'm going to pick up some delicious food, um, you know, bring it home to my family. Yeah. It's the way to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you joined us here today for this lovely Art Wine Festival. It has been an excellent day and hope to see you here next year.
As Corwin said, thank you so much. This is Jamie signing out. <laughs>